Hi everyone, this is Ben Richards, the Business and Communication Librarian at Cleveland State University. This is the second video in a series about the marketing plan research process. Um, this is going to be focusing on the situational analysis in the form of a SWOT analysis. So we have already completed the marketing mix um, in the previous video where we looked at product, price, placement, and promotion. And you will probably want to have at least looked at these, maybe not completed a full analysis, but all of these components are going to help you um, think about what your strengths and weaknesses are as a product or a service, as well as maybe um, guess what some opportunities or threats could be. Um, again, we're using um, Tesla, their Model 3, as the product that we're marketing and we're researching uh, for this series of videos. And looking at what the SWOT analysis consists of, uh, we know that it is uh, basically just a description of the product or services strengths and weaknesses. And those are both internal factors. Um, the strengths of the product, what's the major selling points, what makes it unique and something that customers want to purchase, um, and what are some weaknesses um, where maybe it, it doesn't stack up as well next to potential competitors. Um, opportunities and threats are both external. And so we're looking for market opportunities, potentially improvements that could be made to either the product itself or um, how it's marketed and threats. Um, and these might come from competitors. It might come from market trends or economic trends, or it maybe it comes in the form of regulations that are being imposed by governing bodies. Um, so we'll look at um, both how your marketing mix can inform some of these categories and a library database called IBIS World that will give you a good look at the external environment that your company or organization is operating in. Um, again, I'm going to be filling out a SWOT analysis chart to just show you where different pieces of information are getting plugged in. Um, I will not be writing this live in the screencast, but we'll periodically take a break and look at where different information is going. So before we um, go into one of the library databases, let, let, let's look at the information that we already have about our product. So when we were doing research for the marketing mix, we found some basic information about what the Model 3 is, what kind of a car it is. Um, we know that it's relatively inexpensive, it's an entry level luxury vehicle, and it is um, Tesla's cheapest vehicle at $35,000. Um, we know that it can be made to order or purchase directly from a company owned store. There's no middleman, as it were, in the form of a dealership. And we know that uh, Tesla doesn't really do a lot of traditional advertising. There is sort of a, a viral appeal to Tesla's vehicles and their CEO, Elon Musk. Um, and a lot of their marketing and sales are done through um, word of mouth. People just find out about the cars and they go to the website and they, they order them. So if I'm thinking about what some potential strengths could be. Um, I see that there's a luxury appeal to the Tesla 3, but it's, it's very affordable. It's only $35,000 at the base price, and for a luxury car um, that's an electric vehicle, that's certainly an appealing price point. Um, there are also some additional features like the autopilot hardware that uh, many cars on the market do not have. Uh, it's proprietary software that Tesla has developed and hardware. Um, 
and so that's another potential selling point, a strength of the brand. It's an electric vehicle, so it, it doesn't run on gasoline. That's another strength, um, especially in today's market where consumers are a little bit more um, conscious of the environmental impact of their driving, um, as well as looking for um, a return on their investment in a car and not having to pay a lot of money for gasoline. So that could be a strength. So you can see I filled in my strengths. Um, it's the most affordable Tesla. Tesla has a viral presence around its um, products. People kind of associate the brand with being innovative and it's a, a cool product. Um, it is a luxury car and it also is a relatively high performance vehicle. So it certainly might appeal to the luxury and auto enthusiast market. And it's an electric vehicle. Um, it does not use gasoline. Um, so it, it is also a strength um, in that it's environmentally friendly. And I'm making some assumptions here, but as we'll see in the industry analysis, um, these assumptions will turn out to be true. So let's move on to the weaknesses. So looking at what we know about the Tesla Model 3 before we've done any sort of industry research, external factor research, um, there are two things that stick out to me as potential weaknesses. Now I know I said that um, it being an electric vehicle could be a strength because it, it doesn't need gasoline and it will appeal to environmentally conscious consumers. It also needs a network of charging stations. And while there are charging stations throughout the country, the Tesla line also uses the uh, what they call their super charging network. And these are quick charge stations, which as we'll see in a second, um, there aren't really a whole lot of in certain parts of the country. Now, another potential weakness uh, is that uh, you, you have to either order these online or purchase them direct from a company owned store. And as we will also see, uh, these Tesla dealer um, showrooms aren't present in every state and they're nowhere near as um, abundant as your typical car dealership. So those are two potential weaknesses. Um, and let, let's look at a map to see what I'm talking about with this specific product. So what we're looking at here is um, Tesla's own map of all of their locations. And right now it's limited just to superchargers. Again, superchargers are the um, Tesla's proprietary charging stations for Tesla's. Um, and while it looks like there's just hundreds of them, if you're thinking about a customer in Montana or in North Dakota or in Kansas, or if we zoom in a little bit closer in West Virginia, these customers are not able to take advantage of the um, quick charging superchargers like a customer in the New York area or in the DC area or we zip across the country in San Francisco or in LA. So this is a potential weakness. Um, it might not be convenient for a customer to charge their Tesla at a regular charging station um, at lower speeds. Now let's look at stores and galleries. So what do you want to do before you, you buy a car? You probably want to drive it first. So if you're a customer in Lubbock, Texas, or even worse, a, a customer in Miles City, you're at a severe disadvantage because you'll have to drive a lot longer or wait longer to test drive a Tesla. And so that's another weakness uh, of the product um, and marketing model as it is right now. Uh, customers don't have the same 
access to see the vehicles and to try them out once once they're actually in production and available um, as other vehicle manufacturers that use the dealership model. So I would put that as a weakness. That's just my own interpretation. I've added um, an incomplete charging network in certain parts of the country as well as stores not being present in all areas um, as two weaknesses. And one of the reasons for stores not being present in all areas is that there are direct sale regulations in place in many states which uh, prohibit a car manufacturer to sell directly to consumers like you normally see with a dealership. So that, that is one of the reasons that there isn't a wider network of Tesla company owned stores. Um, now we're doing this analysis for Tesla but you can see what I'm doing here is I'm teasing out uh, potential strengths and weaknesses that I can see just looking at the data that's in front of me. Um, so if you're um, looking at some other kind of product, you can still use the information that you're finding to figure out potential weaknesses and potential strengths about your product or your service. Now at this time, we're gonna move on to um, uncovering some opportunities and threats. And as you'll remember, strengths and weaknesses were internal. So we already had a good deal of information that we'd gathered um, from a couple sources about the Model 3. Opportunities and threats are external, and we haven't really done any external analysis or reviewed any industry reports. So that's what we're going to do at this time. So we are going to go use a library database called IBIS World, which has great industry reports. All right, I'm back on the home page of the library, library.csuohio.edu. I'm accessing IBIS World, so I'll click Research Databases and navigate to the I section and click on IBIS World. IBIS World has um, compiled a, a number of industry reports for U.S. industries, and you can browse all the reports at once if you want. They're organized by industry sector. So Tesla is a manufacturer. They make things. So I would go to manufacturing and you can see the other sectors here. And there's an abundance of manufacturing industry reports. We're probably looking for um, automobile something. So it's not coming out right away. So I'm going to search car. Tesla makes cars. And in their suggested matches, there's car and automobile manufacturing in the US. So let's look at what's contained in the industry report. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to point out um, opportunities and threats that I see, as well as maybe some more strengths and weaknesses that we can identify um, in Tesla. And then I'll go in and plug those into my SWOT analysis chart. This first page is called About the Industry, and it just contains some basic information um, about some of the supply chain, a definition of what this industry consists of, a listing of some of the major players or competitors potentially, as well as additional resources that you can check out on your own um, for more industry information. Now let's click on industry performance. So on the industry performance page, I'm given key external drivers. And so these are environmental factors that have an impact on the industry. So the consumer conf confidence index um, looks like it will decline slowly. Um, 
there's going to be a demand from new car dealers. So that has that would be a good thing for most manufacturers. manufacturers. However, Tesla doesn't sell to dealers, so this, that potentially could be um, a threat. The price of crude oil, if we click, we can see more. It looks like the price of crude oil is going to be dropping. Um, from 2012 to 2017, it did go down 12.6%. And in 2022, it's slated to be only 2.5% higher, so it's not going to drop. Um, so this is not necessarily that great because it's not a huge increase in the price of oil. And someone weighing their um, options, if they want to buy a, a traditional gasoline engine vehicle or an all-electric vehicle, if they're basing the, their purchase solely off of the costs that they're going to incur, they may purchase a cheaper vehicle that they'll have to buy gas for. So it's one external factor that um, could be negative. Now we'll move on to industry outlook, and this is going to be a projection of, of where the industry is going to go. So reading here, I can see that um, credit availability is probably going to decline because the interest rate may go up. And this is going to make it more of a cost to finance vehicles, which for a, even a $35,000 car, most consumers would likely be financing that vehicle. So that's a potential um, threat. Um, and this indicates that the fuel prices are expected to climb. Um, so that could be, that's maybe an opportunity um, more customers looking for fuel efficient vehicles could definitely be an opportunity for Tesla. And if I continue to read through, here's information about the industry life cycle. Um, automobile manufacturing is a mature industry. Um, however, we see some information about um, different segments of the market and this little bit here says the prominence of hybrid and hybrid electric vehicles on the market is growing and will continue to do so through 2022. Um, and there's new technology coming out. So while this is an opportunity because uh, more people are buying hybrid or electric vehicles, this is also a potential threat because there's going to be um, maybe more competitors entering into the electric vehicle market and um, relatively low gas prices could still impact people's decisions to um, favor traditional gas vehicles or even SUVs and trucks over an electric vehicle like the Tesla 3. I've moved on to the products and markets tab in Ibis World and Reading through this section here, looks like more car models are going to be featuring um, either hybrid electric or all electric drivetrains. Um, there's also smaller forced induced forced induction engines and more advanced transmissions, uh, which are also delivering fuel economy gains. So Tesla may not be able to market its products purely on it being an electric vehicle. Other competitors are also producing very fuel efficient vehicles that are not all electric. So that's um, a potential threat as well. Um, now Teslas are um, mid-size sedans, but they are also luxury cars. And this section here says that the market for luxury cars is expanding as incomes increase. And especially for the entry level uh, market, a base price of $35,000, um, that bodes pretty well for Tesla. So I'm going to put that down as an opportunity as well. Ibis World also has um, this subheading called Demand Determinants. 
And this section lets you know um, what is driving demand for uh, certain industries. And so based on their report, we know that price is still uh, one of the big ticket items. Uh, most people don't purchase their vehicles cash, so they have to consider the cost to finance a vehicle. And also we see that fuel prices are driving um, demand for vehicles. Um, people are more cognizant of um, the impact on the environment, but they, they also care about um, their pockets. So they're concerned about, um, will fuel prices be going up? Will I need to be driving a hybrid vehicle or an electric vehicle? Or um, could I maybe buy a, a very fuel efficient, um, but non-electric, non-hybrid vehicle um, based on the projected price of fuel in several years. Now I'm on the major companies tab in IBIS World, and this is a great place to learn about who some of your competitors are. Um, sometimes you'll see that your company is one of the major players. In this case, uh, Tesla isn't. We know that. Um, they're, they're certainly not saturating the market with their products. But they are listed under other companies. And we can see that they have estimated market share of 3.6%. And there's also some interesting insight. It says the viability of electric vehicles has been heavily criticized due to the lack of um, current infrastructure for charging. Um, but we know that Tesla is working um, to expand these operations. So this confirms what we maybe thought about the supercharger network not necessarily being accessible to everyone. And there's just one other tab that I'm going to look at today, even though we skipped over industry at a glance and um, the competitive landscape. We won't look at key statistics either, even though those are all helpful. I'm looking at operating conditions. And a lot of this information is going to be more management level, um, actually looking at how the products are made and um, how the company runs. But what will have a large impact is regulations and policies that are set externally. And so here we see that there are um, new standards coming out um, related to fuel efficiency or fuel economy. And by the year 2025, at least under um, President Obama's updated regulations, um, all cars and light trucks are supposed to have an average fuel efficiency of 54.5 percent or 54.5 miles per gallon um, so it, if this is the case by 2025 a tesla might not be that competitive um, of a an option it's a very high fuel efficiency um, so for a, a cheaper vehicle 54.5 miles per gallon might be more attractive than a base price of $35,000 and a supercharging network. So it's always good to check um, regulations that may pose either a threat or an opportunity for your product and your company. There's just one other resource I want to show you for when you're doing your external report. Um, in addition to the industry reports that you can get from IBIS World and a couple other sources, if your company or if you have a competitor, if you have a competitor company who is a public company, you can always look at the annual report. Because in addition to the sort of a description of different business um, segments and business factors, in the annual report, there is a risk factor section. And this is where um, someone who works for the company essentially does a SWOT analysis and identifies potential threats to the business. So we've already gathered a, a good amount of opportunities and threats and strengths and weaknesses. So I'm not going to read through this section and pick those out with you. But this is another really good place that you can go to get insight into external factors that might affect 
a product's success um, as well as a company's livelihood. So let's go back to our chart and we'll fill it out. So we've learned a lot from looking at the IBIS World Industry Report um, as well as um, just skimming through the risk factors in the um, 10K annual report from Tesla. So in the IBIS World Report, we saw that there is going to be an increased interest in fuel efficient vehicles. And that's definitely an opportunity. People might be more interested in paying a premium price for a vehicle that is fuel efficient. Now, with that being said, the price of gasoline is only going to grow um, incrementally. And it's not expected to grow a large amount in the next five years. So even though there's an interest in fuel efficient vehicles, it's not going to be um, the determining factor in purchasing a vehicle. And because of the interest in fuel efficient vehicles, there's going to be a lot of new electric vehicles that are entering the market from other competitors. Now, in addition to um, those opportunities and threats that were identified, um, I also thought of some other ones. Now, we, we saw that the, a weakness is not having a great um, supercharger network. Well, that's an opportunity. Tesla is expanding that part of their operations, and so at some point in time, um, there will be a lot more access to these superchargers that allow Tesla customers to charge their vehicles quickly. We know that Tesla doesn't do a whole lot of marketing um, or spending money on marketing, so they could develop new marketing initiatives to, to reach a wider audience and to build more of a demand for their vehicles. And they could also expand into working with dealerships. There, there's, there's no rules against them doing so. They've just found that that's the best way uh, to get their product into the hands of customers. But there's nothing to stop them from working with dealerships in the future if they decide that that's the best option for them. Now, another threat is that um, this product won't be available until um, 2018, probably, in, in mass. And so this is a potential threat because you have new competitors coming out and by the time the product reaches market, it may not be as competitive. Um, there was also some information in the risk factors part of the 10K that indicated um, the autopilot features of Tesla may be under scrutiny and there are certain legal complications that could also um, be generated from that. So that's another threat that Tesla has to worry about. Um, now, you could certainly look at other sources. You can, you can Google for all sorts of news that's related to your company's product or your services. Um, we will look at Business Source Complete in the next video about identifying your competitors. And there's all sorts of good information in that database as well that can help you on the SWOT analysis and the marketing mix as well. So tune in to the next video. Thanks.